Oh my god, guys and ladies. This time I have a real goodie for you. We all know the problem with spools like this one. Or this one. Or this one. You understand it. We all have these spools and we keep it while we think that the next part is a small part but then the next print isn't a small print and the over next also not and so we keep spool uh, spool and the next spool then you think about melting them together googling or whatever search engine you are using by the way i'm using start page as tip then you see things like this yes i bought this but maybe i'm too dumb too stupid to use this correct if you have good experience with this thing please write it down in the comments maybe you have a link to a video how you use this my results are a catastrophe a nightmare yeah i was never really able to splice two filaments together with this thing and they are all over if you search for a filament splicer so in my last uh, in the update video you saw that i tried a little self-built thing this is a standard heater block with a self-milled screw it is a two-piece screw so these are come on two parts and if we join them together the hole in the middle is 1.75 millimeters the idea was to screw this in the heater block make it warm one filament spool from one side the other of course from the other side and in the middle it is melting together it's cooling down and then we have an endless or we have spliced the filament but yeah it was not really working in short so i thought again and then the result was this little beauty two pieces ptfe tubes on both sides i don't tell you what is in the middle but what i can tell you is that this beauty is really working if you feed in filament you can see it's going through and now i show you how it works and how you can build your own there are links down in the description you need one part i'm sure you already have also the second part is this ptfe tube this is a standard bowden bowden and you i think have to buy one part mine is printed with abs but you can use i think also pla ptfe whatever you like i i thought it is good to have a heat resistant but it is really not necessary so now i show you how it works so as you see both filaments ends are fitted in and <laughs> now you see all the magic uh, heating up with a lighter you can also use a hot air gun uh, but I wanted to show that it is working with a lighter so both ends are burning that really helps 
and then you simply put them together. There are two strong neodym, niodym, not sure how to pronounce it in English, strong magnets on both sides. They are not glued in. In my example, it's a prototype, it's fresh out of the printer. I also uh, show you later a video how to modify the nozzles you see there. And now you see this is real time speed. So no sped up, nothing. Mm, both ends are melted together. This is the magnet. You have to glue them in on my prototype. They are not, as I say, they are freshly out of the printer. So, and here you see the rest. Uh, you melt both ends put them together and then there is too much materials but while the two nozzles reach at one point they are working like like a knife and then they cut the filament you put it together turn it a little bit to help to cut and then voila we have a filament this is not the best i've made but as you can see it is working so that you see that it is going through uh, without after work no rework nothing it just works. Isn't this a beauty? A goodie? As I said before and I think everyone needs such a thing. It's so easy to splice two filaments together. The example was PLA, PLA plus I think uh, I also tested it with ABS and PETG and worked the same easy way. You have to glue the magnets in. I have not done this yet. It is fresh out of the printer. That's not really difficult. The only work you have to do is to drill the nozzles. Let me show you how I did it. and. Let me say, my workshop is not good. <laughs> Let me show it to you. So we need two nozzles, of course two. We have two sides, so we need two nozzles. Use whatever you have. I use these standard non-volcano ones. I had them laying around in, I think the one is a dot to five and the other is a, a dot eight or so a size I normally don't use. It was part of a set. Um, I screwed the nozzle into an old heater block. Upside down we are drilling from the back side, not from the front side. So the the back side has already the right diameter and it is much easier to drill from this side. Here's my cordless screwdriver with a 1.75 or 1.6, I think, is it a drill, drill bit. So I tried to make it nice and then the drill got stuck in, in the press and screwed the nozzle out of the heater block. Yeah, that's not ideal. So, uh, yeah, take a little bit more force to, to screw it in into the heater block so it doesn't turn loose. So, <laughs> screw that in. You see the drill bit is, is stuck in the nozzle from the backside. So I tried it in my hand, but um, 
yeah for safety this is no good idea so <laughs> i go again with my little uh, dremel uh, clamp here much more safety i'm also wearing safety glasses i'm um, really a safety uh, fetishist uh, i had one horrible accident in my life and that is enough so so the first one is done so the same for the second one if you have a good drill bit, not as I, mine are the, really the cheapest. After both are drilled, we can screw them in the 3D printed holders. The hole in the middle has 5.5 millimeter diameter. There is no thread in it. Uh, the brass should be strong enough to cut its own thread and so it's it's really important that it is centered on both sides so we screwed in the first one so screwing also the second side in then put in the magnet Keep attention that it is in the right orientation. And now you see that the nozzle is a little bit, just really a little bit higher as the magnet. On this side, it is good to see. Normally, it should be my design. If you use a standard nozzle, they are normally all the same height. So it, you screw it on the, on my left hand side, you screw it fully in the right hand side, on this one I have now in my hand, there you see I'm adjusting it a little bit, for me it was a little bit too far out, so I screwed it in a little bit more, the magnet back in, as I said please, if you are done, glue in the magnet, so it stays in place. Take a PTFE tube, put it from the back side in until you hit the nozzle from the back side. On the side of the 3D printed parts, there is a hole for an M3 by 10 screw so that the PTFE tube can't move. So here you see me. The first try really out of the printer. For drilled and put them together. Wait a little bit. There you also see the screws to hold the PTFE tubes in place. Oh, sorry for the background noise. Our local farmer is <laughs> driving outside and the, the windows are open. So I, you have seen this turning. This turning is to cut the filament. Oh, after it is melted together, if this this too much material is still there, if if the cut has not perfectly worked, just wiggle a little bit on the on the material, and it comes loose, and you have a perfectly joined filament. Isn't this a beauty? I think it is a real a goodie. Everyone needs this. It's really easy and cheap to self-build. I love it. If I had none, I had to invent one, but now I, I have one. So the next project, stay here, don't leave. 
The next project is in the making. I'm sitting in front of the CAD software. Uh, as I have seen, I've printed Rook parts. I'm not 100% happy with uh, everything. So I thought it would be a nice touch to combine ideas I have from the Rook with the little, uh, I call it the baby Voron. I think it's the 0 0.1, I think is the name. Uh, much easier with the belt, no belt on the front side and, and other things. I'm not really happy how the set axis moves on the Rook. It is, don't misunderstand me, it is a really, it is a great, a great uh, 3D printer and Thanks to Rolo Horn, Rolo Horn that he has published it. But I'm not 100% happy. Perfect that I was able to print the parts. They gave me an idea how to modify things. So big thumbs up also for him. Link is here to his project if you want to try it. So. It is in the making. Um, here is a little here, a little picture from the cat. Not finished yet, so please come back for the project. The goal is to make it a little more rigid to print even faster, not as a metal frame Voron. You can't achieve this with only 3D printed parts and a few rods. But the goal is to make a small compact Core XY for higher speeds. Simple, cheap, easy to build, but with a little bit more speed. So now that's for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you want to support me, maybe on Patreon then links down in the description. See you in the next one.